You coming? You coming to help? Turn that off. All right, so I wasn't going to film this. I was just going to get it done and move on with life. But this is the uh, this is the car that ran off the road and got the hole in the oil pan. And what this contraption is doing right now is holding the motor and transmission in the air because I have the bottom of the car. Take it apart. And then you see the ooh, ooh, had a little pressure in there. See there's the motor bounce. Motor's just dangling. So that's, that's that contraption does holds the motor so you can take the cross members down those are the motor mount brackets over there and this is the oil pan with the patch job i had bottomed the car out trying to go get some pizza the curb was real high and i hit the hit the repair and knocked some of it off but i had already bought an oil pan before I did this repair but I don't I think it would have lasted a lot longer if I wouldn't have bottomed the car out so you can see the repair on the inside did a good job it uh, sealed up really nice for a while and at least you know I was able to find out that the motor is still good and even though it does have an oil pressure problem at some times not all the time I don't really know why it's doing it like that but I'm going to clean all this out and uh, I'm going to put it back together with the new pan and gasket and um, we're going to drive it because right? it runs and drives it does everything it needs to do except for the oil light that comes on every now and again uh, so I don't know if there's just, you know, something's hurting the motor. I looked at all the rods. I don't see nothing hurt on the rods. Nothing's loose. But it, it's going to be a minor damage to the motor. So with all that said, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to start putting this back together. Clean it up. And, uh, we'll have to go get some oil and, uh, put it in there. Stay tuned. Just scrape off the uh, old gasket material. Your silicone. I don't believe this was the factory oil pan. I think it was changed one time before. But uh, just gonna clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna wipe it down with some with some uh, degreaser, and uh, hopefully I have everything I need, and I don't have to go nowhere to pick nothing up. Hope you know how that is. <clears throat> <coughs> Alerts to work.
All right, so I got the oil pan all bolted up. Get a little light on it. Not a blinky light, just a regular light. Yeah, went around, tightened up everything multiple times. All those tight back here. Only thing I have left to do is these two bolts that go in here and in here up to the oil pan rail. And to do that, you gotta have this tool with the ball on the end. And it's gotta be, you know, it's gotta be long to get up in there and under the frame. I'm gonna try to put them in before I put the frame up, just for the hell of it. But if not, I can get them in after the frame is back in place. So let me see if I can do that. All right, so you see, you see up in there. And there's a little wave in the flywheel. So I gotta do this one first and then turn the flywheel to get that one in. a good spot. Time to get a magnet. Alright, don't have a pencil magnet. Not good. Babe, see you later.
I need a magnet. Let's start get it. All right, when I tell you, I've been struggling for the last two hours trying to get the the bolt that I dropped inside there out. And if you see that little crack right there, I was able to see it. So I was like, how am I going to fish that out? Well, I just dropped it again. And now it's in this hole. But to get it out of that hole, I got these super powerful magnets that I use to, uh, to hold magazines in a gun safe. So, I'm going to do it again, but this time it's just right up in here. You got to There it is. Comes in handy. The super powerful magnets. I'll try to do it again without dropping it this time. On that. I'm wondering if I can just magnetize it. Yeah, well. So now it's magnetized with these magnets. So I'm gonna try to do it again without messing up this time and losing it. You can't see nothing. Hold on, hold on a minute. I had it sticking to everything. I'm gonna have to wait and put this one in once I get the subframe up. So we'll do that later. But I can move on now because I got the bolt out. I did not want to leave it in there and get caught by the flywheel and break a hole in something important. So let's get the front end back in place. We'll put that bolt in once it's all assembled. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna let the jack down because I got the tire jacked up and that's pushing the subframe down to get the oil pan in and with the AC line out of the way, you was able to get all that in and out. But uh, yeah, let's get this back into place. Have to go back where it needs to go. Nope. Just push it over a little bit. Can't. Try that again.
one started. Get this one started. Sleigh bar. Which way this goes? This way. I wanted to put some spaces to hold the builder up a little higher. Let me see if I got anything. I want to jack the frame up. Sway bar on, which holds the motor. Knock you guys over. Get back in position. What the heck's going on around here? Camera charge back up. Got this all uh, in place. I was struggling with that, and then the camera turned off. And right after the camera turned off, it just fell into place and all that good stuff. So now we just got to tighten it up and uh, move on to a few other things down here. It's not that hard to get it all the parts. It's getting started and doing it is the actual hard part so let's get these all tightened up Alright. 
nothing to it but to do it, I guess. Let the jack down. bolts to the bolt in here that's out of place That's going to be a struggle. Get that in place. That's gonna be fun. There we go. If one side don't go in to the other side and it might go in I believe that's a different size five eighths 16 millimeters It started. There we go. Now it's in there. All right, I'm gonna find the proper wrench. Yeah, there it is. Found it.
I had went ahead and got everything buttoned up on onto here. Got the little sport braces on. Everything's bolted up. A little torque strap, except for the motor mounts. We have to go up top. Let the motor down. It's only up maybe an eighth of an inch. I could probably tighten them down and then let the motor down, but it's not how I normally do it. You can see right there, there's a bit of a gap in the motor mount. Yeah, a little wiggle. So we'll let the motor down and then we'll take a better look at how we got it strapped up holding the motor up. All right. So obviously there's points on the engine that have bracketry to install this type of equipment. It just kind of holds on to the fender. You want to make sure it's supported with an end fender. And then uh, you watch the motor go down. It's really a cool, uh, little invention here. If you do this kind of work, this is what you need. And this little support right here is great for the front wheel drive, uh, rear, rear wheel drive. However, you gotta do a clutch or something. You need to remove the subframe. This is how you do it. Just hold the motor in place. These brackets are for the bolts on in those holes right there in case you don't have a, a strong area. I, have, I made these to get a broader area of contact. But whatever you need. Whatever, whatever it takes to do it. That one hit the ground. Nice chains, hooks. And that's it. Just rests up there. Now we put oil in it. And uh should be the same, so it's not that big a deal. But this is more about using the engine cradle holder. I'll figure out the right name for it and put it in the description or something. But yep. I'll just finish buttoning up the bottom and Take a full rod.